We're here on site today in this industrial unit and we're looking at some of the challenges we have with industrial wiring. Now, the very nature of industrial units themselves causes those challenges because tenants change. One day it might be someone doing some car valeting, it might be someone doing a bit of joinery the day after, or even an electrician moves in. And each tenant needs different electrical systems, they have different equipment, machineries change, business grows, and tenants change. So what have we got installed at the moment, Gary, that's been inherited in this unit? Not a lot. We've got a, a twin 13 amp socket outlet here, a three phase one and a 16 amp single phase socket outlet on this area here. All right, well that one seems to be uh, upside, upside down. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now when you add something to the wall there in terms of new sockets, particularly things like three phase, you have to do something here at the distribution end. So let's just have a look in the cupboard, Gary, to see what we've inherited. Oh, oh dear. A, yes. Okay. Well, we haven't got a lot to work with in this industrial unit, so clearly some changes are going to be needed. Perhaps, perhaps it might just be best to have a full rewire of the full unit. And that gives us a chance to use a product that we've looked on the channel before, Gary. Now, what is that product? It's a top tur range from Luden Palazzoli. We've seen it on the channel many times, and Joe absolutely loves it. I think he calls it the Lego of the electrical industry because the amount of variants you can have. And I've been busy creating one already. Well, I've created one as well, Gary. You get yours, I'll get, I'll mine. get mine. <laughs> Well, what have you built? Well, I built what we had here. I've got an industrial uh, three-phase socket outlet, 16-amp one, and believe it or not, under here, I'll just put a 13-amp one in as well. All yeah, right, okay. Well, I've just gone straight for some 16 amp, but I've put an emergency stop and some light switches on it. So this is the flexibility of the system. I think we'd best go back to the workshop and have a bit of a, a deep dive onto what we've done here, Gary, just to look at some of those other options and how it can be used to solve the problems we have in industrial units, not just today for the current tenant, yeah but for the next tenant that comes along so we can make quick changes. So Gary, you managed to get to the Lego box before I did. What have you managed to conjure up for your solution? Okay, let's bring Handcam in and have a look. So we've got a three phase uh, 32 amp socket. We've got a 16 amp one and our traditional 13 amp three pin one. And these two here both have interlocking switches. All right, so I can't energize this socket unless the plug's properly inserted. Yeah, I can't, I can't turn that switch. So interesting IP rating. So the system itself is, the enclosure is IP66, but you've chosen an IP44 uh, socket. So that's, uh, yeah, obviously that is a choice you have with the system, depends on, uh, on, on what, you, what you need to get in the area working. Uh, let's have a look at the circuit protection you've shown us, Gary. No, that's my favourite mechanism. Yeah, I know, I knew you were in there quickly. Yeah, so there's a mechanism, which can be locked yeah. off as well. Yeah, but it's so. very easy to open this up. And we've gone with uh, incoming RCD protecting all the circuits in here. We've got obviously our three phase 32 amp breaker and a couple of 16 amp ones as well. But look how much room I've got if I want to develop it on further. Yeah, now that's an interesting option there because obviously now more and more socket outlets require RCD protection. Absolutely, yeah. And that causes you a big problem with your distribution board because that, you know, having to put an RCD in there plus the overcurrent device that takes up a lot of space. Yeah, and of course doing it this way means that we just have the single breaker coming out and the RCD protection for more than one circuit is incorporated in the top tur. And we think that's a brilliant solution, don't we? Yeah, because obviously it allows you to, yeah, got the RCD protection, but then you can configure your overcurrent protection to suit what's yeah. installed here. Yeah, so that's gonna throw up some interesting installation options. I think we're keen to throw it. So you might feed this, say, with a, a 63 amp incoming supply from your distribution board. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and then you're breaking it down for the individual sockets. Now, here's an option we could do. We have featured before in the past this flat cable system. Right, you're throwing a, that one in. You believe that we could perhaps run this round an industrial unit, tap off box, maybe a flexible conduit, or maybe yeah. a tough sheath, or is it high tough? Tough sheath. Tough there. sheath cable down to the actual uh, enclosure itself. Yeah, that could be another option there. So again, it's just a different way of thinking about industrial wiring. Right, mm. okay. Well, I had a main RCD switch in mind. It looks like you've got a slightly different configuration right. yours. So, you want yeah, to give us uh, a look at yours? Yeah, I've done things slightly differently. Now, when it comes to the top tier range, there's two enclosure styles. You've got this one that sort of takes dual modules and traditionally you've needed that for the interlock sockets. Okay, yeah but I've used another clever product from the Luden range, Kerry, and it's the XCE range, but with the rotor switch. So let's just have a recap on how that works. So what I like about the Luden range is the interchangeability between different system components, and it carries on with the XCE range. So I've got a 
I've got a plug and I've got a socket here. Now, if I want the socket to be a sort of free one on the end of a flexible cable, I just attach this rear housing to it. And then I've got my cord grip and everything else nice and robust. And also, so this is a standard sort of socket here that doesn't have a, uh, that doesn't have a switch mechanism, but here's our one with the rotor switch in there which means I get an interlocking switch operation to it. So again, I could put that with a flexible cable on there, or here's the clever bit, I can mount it to the front of our top tow range by putting it into this adapter here. So again, it's very simple. That just screws in. And again, there's a locking mechanism there. So that's the rotor link. If I wanted the interlock version, I could go also with the non-interlock version as well. Now that's pretty clever and quite unique to this system. And for even further information on the XCE range, it's worth checking out the video that Joe made on it. I'm sure you'll leave a link in the description below, won't you? Yeah, I did, and that showed some of the important safety benefits yeah. of interlocking switches and sockets. Now, uh, we looked at, so that was the socket outlet. So because I've used that, Gary, I've managed to save a bit of space. Okay, yeah. so what have you, let's have a look. Let's see what else you've put in there for us then. So with saving that bit of space, I've managed to put an emergency stop in there. Okay. Might, depending on what you're getting, what you're doing in the area. I've even managed to put in some, uh, some light switches as well, so if you want, uh, perhaps you needed some uh, local task illumination in the area, that could be wired from this panel as well. I look at my circuit protection, I've gone down a different route. It's a main uh, switch protect, uh, isolating all of the um, socket outlets here, and then some individual RCB options. And again, still plenty of room because the uh, XCE range also is available in three phase as well. Right, yeah. So I could have had, obviously I could have had more uh, single phase outlets and a three phase one if I'd wanted to as well. It's clear, isn't it? The choices are almost endless. Mm -hmm. Look at the table, look at the stuff we've got behind us. I think it's your imagination that's the only thing holding you back. And it doesn't stop there as well. So obviously if you still wanted to do things should we say the old way and oh do all your God. circuit protection <laughs> circuit protection from the uh, from the distribution board or perhaps you wanted to wire in some additional socket outlets from your board here you can obviously get the the uh, top tow range uh, with these uh, these wall boxes as well so again if i wanted to make this an interlocked version i take this one out and i bring in the uh, rotor link yeah, so I just again put that in there, and then I've got a I've got a, a plug-in version. So let's just check how that rotor link works again as well. So I bring the socket outlet in; it fully engages. I twist on to get my IP rating, and then when it comes, you just there's the rotor link. The name gives it away. We always like that. And there we go. I've made the uh, can you get that good positive action. Yeah, I can. And that'll support an AC 23A switch load if you haven't uh, seen those previous videos. And it's in that video, yeah. So mm. link in the description to that one. It, yeah, it's, I, I'm just thinking, why haven't we thought of this before? We were in a, a different industrial unit and it was clear, wasn't it, that one of these screwed to the wall and the flexibility it gives you, both for the current user and yeah. future users, is immense. Yeah, and we've seen how regulations keep changing, more RCD protection. Now, we've got some other ones as well, Gary, behind us. You may, if you've seen this product before, and people got pretty excited about it, we made this version here for use possibly as a building site temporary supply. Well, actually, we didn't make it. We actually, Luton, we drew a famous sketch and they came back with this uh, fantastic option for uh, temporary supplies on construction sites. But yeah, there is just lots of different options out there. So we're not in this video going to look at the internals of this because we already have like, a fantastic video that shows obviously some of the other options with the top tow range and the bags of wiring room in there. Yeah, and again, I'm sure you'll leave the link to the description. That's another video that Joe produced. But as always, we're interested in your thoughts. Now, would it be wise for us to follow this on with a video where perhaps in the industrial unit we saw at the start, we actually install these as the solution to the lack of socket outlets in that area? We'd like that feedback. Are you currently using any of the range in this top tier from Luden Palazzoli at the moment? Is there any top tips you want to give our community? Please leave those comments below, and me and Gordon will also try and get back to as many as we can. Thank <laughs> you.